Hello, everyone, and welcome to this very special edition of the Altium On Track podcast. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and we are here today to review some of the most interesting discussions and moments from the 2023 season. 2023 was definitely a whirlwind year. We saw several rounds of M&A. We saw new investment in manufacturing capacity closer to the United States and Europe. And we saw a shift in the conversation to focus on packaging design. Let's take a listen to what some of our experts had to say on these matters. But is, is this a case of if you build it, the demand will come? Or are these companies that need to invest in that capability and build it up are they always chasing the demand? Meaning the demand has to be here first. Well, this is where the the government intervention or government incentive comes in. The demand was not there when they built these huge factories in China and Taiwan. They built it on the come. Now, let's say you're running a company and you want to build a substrate factory and it's going to take $100 million in equipment. You have to wait two or three years for the equipment. You've got five other competitors already there or trying to set up, what will your stockholders or money people say? How patient are your investors? So to what extent do you see this playing out in North America, in Europe, or in other regions of the world that are outside of Southeast Asia? I think at the end of the day, there'll be more of those companies onshore to support the TSMCs and the Intel and the guys that are doing the wafers here, the Texas Instruments and the Corbo guys and so forth. I think you're going to see an influx of people trying to jump into the game. But I have to tell you, it's not the easiest thing to do. Packaging at the educational level and the academic level is another way to get people to focus on printed circuit boards because they're going to have to learn those same yeah. skills. You're, you're absolutely right with that, Zach. Um, most people understand that if you looked at a VGA, it is a small circuit board, but it's built with some materials that are not common materials. You know, when you have a 25 micron or uh, dielectric thickness, you know, a one, a one mil dielectric thickness, that's not a standard off the shelf material. Um, the whole idea of MSAP, ASAP, um, you know, the semi additive, um, you know, micro traces solving micro BGAs, et cetera. Um, this is packaging it at a next level. And getting to that end state takes a while. Um, there's already broadening out into like Vietnam and India. I know uh, the mm -hmm. iPhone, I think, is being assembled or produced in India. And they, you know, you always see in the news they're having some kind of quality issue. And, you know, this Apple stock takes a hit for the day, that kind of thing. Um, but I, I think uh, it's going to take a while to really see all of this start to proliferate out and maybe get a more balanced production portfolio. Would you agree? I would. I, I tell people all the time that we took 30 plus years to dig this hole and we're not going to dig ourselves out of it in 30 weeks, maybe not even 30 months. It's going to take a while for us to get there. But the, the imperative is to start, Zach. It's not to watch this happen any further. Um, we've recognized that there's a problem. We're educating people as to the nature of the problem and the solution. And what follows is action. What has to follow is action. All the experts we just saw are helping move the industry in a new direction with new approaches to supply chain management, sustainability, and automation. We spoke with several experts working in the field who focus on making electronics manufacturing more sustainable and more efficient. Let's take a look. How would a production manager or someone working on the floor, how would they react to the idea of bringing data science into production operations? Do they, do they see that as being something that is, uh, I guess, overly difficult for them? Because like you said, if they don't know the difference between mean and median, and then you say yeah. data science, how do they react to that? Like way over their head? It's, um, it's been something that I've been encountering quite a bit of. And just like anyone starting their own business, there's unexpected challenges, right? You're going to hit, you know, the, the grass is always greener on the other side until you start really dealing with how to, you know, put together an insurance policy and data protection, even internally, right? So when I got to actually start working with, you know, potential customers and clients, that was, that was like the prime thing that I started hitting early on was, you know, misunderstanding and education of what, what these tools can really do and truly defining what is the business problem from a production engineering standpoint that we could use potentially data science to help with. How to get the things to talk together is always, always the issue. 
um, we've noticed it even in the lab, right? You have, of just getting one thing to talk to another, right? Because you, you look at this, you know, things with artificial intelligence and 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 what you want to do with automation, it requires a lot of data and, and understanding and how that data flows and getting it all together. Um, you know, that that's the that's the backbone of the industrial IoT that we're talking about, right? And how to connect those things. Um, there's not an easy solution. It's funny because components play such an integral aspect to this entire picture, but it's the most clandestine, almost um, ill-researched, I guess, if you will, uh, side of the side of the house, right? I mean, and, and I think now, coming off the back of this shortage, you're finding companies saying, "Okay, well, uh, it's great that the markets are." are lightening up again, but how do we not be in the situation we were two years ago? How do we not let Ford and Apple beat us to the table again? We need a stronger community of sustainability for electronics. And I am excited to be building that community. And today I'm glad to be talking to you to say we need this community and the listeners to this podcast can be part of that community. Um, it can be more formal, but right now it's rather informal. We just want people talking about this and coming forward with ideas of how to address environmental, social, governance, sustainability issues for the value chain based on what is most pressing and relevant, because not everything's relevant to electronics, but what is most pressing and relevant that we can do that. As these policies evolve and as these kind of peer pressure evolves, those OEMs are wanting more clarity and proof that what the suppliers are giving to them is accurate and reliable. Following the launch of Altium's new Launchpad program, we had the opportunity to speak with innovative designers from several hardware startups. This was a great opportunity to learn about the newest trends in technology. Let's take a look. It sounds like uh, this is a good opportunity for a company like yours to really create the de facto standard for power interfaces um, throughout the powertrain. And then that really exactly. creates a mode yeah. around your company. Yeah, yeah, and that that's our main goal. So you're gonna, our main goal is to how to get to the market as fast as possible, and as efficient as possible using the high safety protocols, um, and that's what we're doing right now. That's why our team is working uh, extremely hard to be able to get our footing on the ground and test our system with the. With the early samples that we started, uh, that we started working on with our customers. Let me show you an example. Uh, we're working with really large companies, um, and we had a last week. We had a recall event that we were involved in. So we had the data, and the company was using their conventional traceability system, which is the top of the line, uh, to do a recall based on a date code. So instead of recalling the entire lot, the entire date code of the two production site, they only did, the, they were lucky, it was only the small, the small part of the manufacturer that they had to recall. So instead of recalling a thousands of board, there was only a few hundreds that they had to do that. Robotic Vision Unlocks is like new markets, new industries, new applications. And it's definitely not like a, you know, winner take all type of, type of view for us. We believe that anything that we can do to help um, get these sort of devices out there will create these new industries that will then flow back into you know future hardware sales. Um, so it's really an intentional decision there um, that by open sourcing there we can really like accelerate the adoption of these type of devices out there in the world. And we think that's ultimately a win-win. To help support innovative PCB designers and hardware engineers, Altium has released new collaborative design tools and simulation tools in partnership with leading EDA software companies. Our next round of guests offer a glimpse at what designers can expect in the future. So in, in this new workflow, you say a digital bridge. To me, that sounds a little bit like you're taking the co-designer workflow the that people know and enjoy so much and extending it over to simulation. Yes, the, 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 the tool itself is essentially very, very similar to the MCAT co-designer uh, or the MCAT collaboration. It's pretty much on the Altium side is a panel where you're gonna push the data 
to uh, the simulation engineer. And that goes again, at just you know the same way as the MCAT, it goes into Altium 365, where you have all the data managed there under uh, revision. Uh, and then ANSYS access the data from there as well. And you'll, they will have a similar, plat, uh, similar tool where they can push and pull data as well as make, making comments to specific uh, objects. So I just have to ask, how big is the MID market? You, will you, you know, Michael, you mentioned a couple of areas, which was like smartphones, and then I think you mentioned radar, things like this. So I'm just wondering, how big is that market? Yeah, so the, the, the market is very big. So uh, uh, you, you, you're, you're totally right, as you mentioned before. So we are active in, in medical devices. We are active in automotive, in transport, in aviation, in, in, in uh, defense. So we are the, the, the complete market. So we are talking about some uh, 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 hundred of, 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 of uh, millions of uh, euros, you know. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a huge market uh, all, all over the world. What is coming up, though, to help PCB designers who maybe aren't, you know, so SI savvy because, mm -hmm. frankly, they're solving layout puzzles every day? Right. What, what's on the roadmap from Keysight to help those folks? Mm -hmm. From my from my perspective as a high speed digital applications product manager, right now, electrical performance scan, EP scan is, is doing really well in helping PCB designers. Our next step is not only to show you the results, but to show you how to fix these problems. None of these podcast episodes and discussions would be possible without our guests. So I want to give a big thank you to everyone on our guest list. And of course, thank you to all of the viewers who continue to watch this program. You are the reason that we do this. And last but not least, don't stop learning, stay on track, and we'll see you all again in 2024. Thanks, everybody.